You know, every now and then I come across somebody who embodies the community strategies that I teach. And one of those people is Lauren Golden. She is the founder of the Free Mama Movement. And today she's going to be talking about how she turned that community into a million dollar movement and how you can do the same. Hey friend, I'm so excited to have you with me here today because I'm bringing you my friend, Lauren Golden, who I kind of just want to introduce as like the founder of the Free Mama movement because that's a lot of what we're going to be talking about. But the truth is, is that she is an award-winning entrepreneur. She is a best-selling author. She's a speaker and a coach, and she's really on a mission to help 1 million women take their next step of courageous action because that is what she has been doing as a mom and an entrepreneur, and she has helped tens of thousands of women do that as well. And so I'm excited because she's going to be talking with us about uh, the community element of what she does, how she's really helped people develop this identity of a free mama, turned that into a movement, and then how that weaves into what she does to help essentially sell her programs, right? So that all weaves together. But like any authentic mom. We were just talking before this and she's like, I'm running on very little sleep, but I am here and we are doing the thing, right, Lord? It's like, cause that's the truth. It's crazy because I think I remember in my early days of entrepreneurship, like more than 10 years ago, listening to people talk about, oh, like you can do this. I know you're trying to like do the side hustle and I know you're tired. I know you're up at night with your baby, but like you can do this. And I just remember looking at them and being like, You probably don't remember what it's like to not get sleep. You don't remember what it's like to have hard days and still show up because I just thought they had it all together. And so I really love when we can just show up and be like, yeah, no, we're super successful businesswomen. And guess what? We still have hard days and have to show up when we don't want to because we haven't gotten a good night's sleep. And my discernment over the last few years that I didn't have when I first started entrepreneurship is also knowing when it's okay to cancel. It is okay sometimes to go, you know what? I don't feel good and deviate from that pushing and whatever. So, you know, I think it's a balance. I know balance has become kind of this dirty word, but I actually am a raging fan of the idea of balance because for me, it has nothing to do with perfection. It has to do with knowing when you need to teeter into something, whether that's family, self, or business. And again, having that discernment of like, which is which. And I was sharing with you before we started, I'm like, okay, I've been up since 2 a.m., but I got four hours. I can do anything for four hours. I'm not sick. I'm just sleepy. We're going to do it for four hours and then we're going to crash. If I woke up with a fever, today, I would have known, you know what, we need to take care of ourselves. Nothing is that important. I'm going to rest and take care of my body. But five years ago, I don't, I probably would have done it with the fever. So, you know, we're a work in progress. We're always growing. (laughs) Yeah, it's healthy growth. And to know that you have designed your business in your life in such a way that you can give yourself that space and that grace when you need to, because I can remember a season in my life where if I woke up sick, and needed to take the day, that would lead to a domino effect that would take me a very long time to recover from. So knowing your life and building in the margin, I think, is part of that learning process. Okay, so I feel like we're already starting to dive in, but I want to ask you the question I ask everybody when they come in, what is your favorite community you have ever been a part of, and what did you love about that community? I am so glad you prepped me for this question so that I could like fan through the history In all honesty, my favorite community to be a part of is the one that I created. And I'm not saying that to brag. I'm saying that because I was really lacking a space for someone like me, which is why I created the community that I did in the first place. The non maybe egotistical answer is I feel like I've taken positives from from different parts of my life. I went to an all girls high school that had a very solid sense of community. I was in a sorority in college, but there were things that definitely stood out. Lack of safety maybe being one of them. There were cliques. I didn't always feel like I could be myself or be vulnerable. I felt like I had to fit a certain character to belong in those communities. And for me, That doesn't make them my favorite, but there were also positives that I took. When you reminded me about this question, what I actually thought of, which I think there's so much to learn from, although I'm not in the community anymore, is are you familiar with the newsletter, The Skim? Okay. I like forever ago, I feel like. 
Okay. Yeah. So I was a very early adopter of this scam. If you're not familiar, there's two female founders. I've met them. They're very cool. It's still going on again. I just now have different boundaries with technology, but it's a quirky millennial daily recap of the news told it in an exciting way. And again, I was an early adopter within like the first six months of them launching and they launched. And the reason that they took off and still are thriving today is because they had this ambassador program. And so when you said, what's your favorite community? I remember feeling like I was contributing to something bigger than myself. I remember being told that I was part of something and part of this ambassador program. Like you, you didn't earn money or money or anything like that, but they had swag. They'd sent you in milestones and all these different things that I look back now and I'm like, I don't even think I did any of this consciously, but I actually think I borrowed a lot of what I learned from what they did in that community that I have integrated in the Free Mama movement that I've never even thought about until you asked me this question. So they did a brilliant job of creating something that people felt like they were a part of that really spoke specifically to that group of millennial women unapologetically. They didn't care what other people thought, you know, what a boomer man thought about their newsletter. That's not who they were talking to. And they did a good job of taking care of their people and their followers. So I'm going to go with that final answer. Final answer. Well, I love it because you are highlighting on they knew their community, they knew their audience, and they spoke to them and they didn't care about what anybody else thought about their interpretation of the news. They knew exactly who they were speaking to. And then that ambassador piece you touched on one thing in particular is that you feel like you're a part of something bigger. And that's a lot of what you've created with the Free Mama movement. So let's talk about that just a little bit, because if you're listening to this podcast, chances are you've heard me talk about my community framework where I talk about cause, culture, communication, and connection. Go back to the very first four episodes. That's where you will find them. But when I think of a model community that has done this really well, I think about what you have done, especially when it comes to the cause and the culture piece, having that common purpose, that common mission that we're all a part of together, part of something bigger than ourselves, And then the culture of these beliefs, behaviors, and boundaries of how when you adopt this identity of a free mama, you show up differently for each other and for yourself. And so can you just give us some practical understanding of how this is really played out from you and how you went from this vision of helping this person you wanted to help to really creating an identity and a whole movement around it. Don't want to say I think I got lucky. However, I will say that some of my actions early on, I think were subconscious. I think like I just acknowledged, like I had these experiences. What I think I was really good at doing was realizing that my community wasn't about me. And this is kind of the antithesis to the gurus out there where it's like all about them, right? And who they are and follow me. Whereas I feel like my invitation was always be a part of something. Like, yes, I'm going to be a leader and I'm going to bring this information. But part of being a leader is you showing up and setting the stage. And this I definitely did with intention. I was very clear from day one of launching my Facebook group, which is, I would say, the hub of our community. I was very clear on my values. And and not just was I clear on them and explicitly articulating what those values were and, I, and my mission, and which would you, I think would be kind of equivalent to your cause, right? What is that? What's that mission statement? What are we doing? Who are we? What does it mean to be a free mama? And something that I did do with a lot of intention, not subconsciously, is show up as a model member. I exemplified what it looks like to be in this community. I showed up every day. I answered questions. I was consistent with my trainings and my Facebook lives. I did what I said I was going to do. I kept things positive. I was very intentional about protecting the space. We have a one and done policy. We have people who have written us novel emails asking to get back in the group. And I don't want to say that we're unforgiving, but we take our rules extremely seriously. And so depending on the infraction, you're out. And again, we're, we take it on a case by case basis. I don't think we're not so locked in that we think we're right all the time, but we are very protective and we don't mess around. And because we set that tone early on, this may surprise you. I have never had a full-time community manager. 
I would say I do about 60 to 70% myself because we've built this culture that protects itself. People will report stuff immediately. If people take things to the DMs and they get sketchy, people will send us screenshots and we can have it handled in two seconds flat. It really, it, it is, we've created this space where everybody feels like they have a seat at the table. And I think that is what I feel most passionately about when it comes to community. I think Facebook groups are an outstanding way to grow and support your business. And I'm talking about like a free group, right? Somewhere where you would maybe nurture your leads. But one of the things that I think I do really differently is I even create space and nurture people who are non-buyers. I can see beyond the transaction of a relationship. And I think that contributes both to the safety, but also there's a lot of really other positive things that can come from them. And so I've never treated my Facebook group like a place I sell to. I treat it like a community. Yeah. And there's a couple of things there that I really want to highlight. And I love that you said you've never had a full-time community manager because that really doesn't surprise me. I talk a lot about how the stronger your cause is and the stronger your culture is and the better job that you do modeling that earlier on then the less management your community needs. And it truly becomes less of management, more of cultivation where you're amplifying what's happening within the group and the voice of the members versus like having to drum up engagement and having to create all of this inside of the group. That feels very heavy. It feels like you're just constantly in this hamster wheel of like, oh gosh, like if I don't post something, the engagement isn't going to happen. And a really, really healthy community is thriving, even if you're not showing up. Now, that doesn't mean you ghost because you care about that community. And that's one of the things that I hear from you is you have shown up consistently. And I love how you're so passionate about you. This is not an audience to sell to. This is a community to nurture, to pour into. And yet you still have a paid community as well that people can go deeper and get more support and a more intimate community, right? More access. But you still have this free Facebook group, this free community that isn't just like a sales cycle piece for you. What I love is that I've had people on this podcast that say the exact opposite. And they say, you don't get access to me unless you pay. And that's their belief. And they live that out. And so for me, it's like you you get to decide, like you get to decide how you're going to show up and what your beliefs are. And because you have this core belief in this movement of helping, I think you, you probably have a belief of like helping a million moms become like a free mama or whatever it might be. And that drives your desire to continue to show up for people, even though they aren't paying. I would also say it's one of my points of differentiation. So think about it in terms of, yes, what you want. I'm all for boundaries. I do have healthy boundaries as well. It's not that I'm on my phone 24-7 or people can just send me DMs all the time. Yeah, I've got a template for that. You know what I mean? Like if you want access, like you said, there is a time and a place for that. But there's a level of accessibility that makes me approachable. It makes me likable to the right people. We're not, nobody's for everybody. But there's this sense of if she can do it, I can do it too that for my particular audience is really important. My offers essentially are B2C. I'm kind of that first point where someone goes, yeah, I'm gonna start a business. They're nervous. Their belief system is not high. They have a higher nurturing period, but once they get going, it's awesome. It's really beautiful. So I think you're right. There's not one way to do anything, but do it with intentionality and purpose, which is something I think that I did. And I wanna be really clear about something too, if it's okay, in terms of like, what does this look like? Back when I first started my Facebook group in 2017, it looked like two to three hours a day. I just want to be really transparent because I've had so many people approach me and they're like, I want my Facebook group to function like yours. Can you talk to my VA or can you train? And I'm like, if you want to replicate something that I've done, it's going to require you to actually lead this community and be involved. Russell Brunson is probably an example that I love of this. People will see Russell or they'll maybe meet him in real life for the first time and people feel like they know him. They know about his faith. They know about his wrestling obsession. Like they know, they know so much about him. They know about Colette and the twins and the other kid. Like people feel like they know him. And that's something that people always tell me. The greatest compliment I ever get is when I meet someone in real life and they're like, oh my gosh, it's you and you're just like you. And I'm like, yeah, but you can't outsource that. 
Today, I spend maybe 15 minutes, 15 to 20 minutes, unless it's a day where I'm doing a training and then it's probably closer to an hour. But it's one of those things where we have to look at our bandwidth. If you want a a mission-driven, highly engaged community that, yes, includes buyers for your offers, that feels connected to you, feels like they know you and knows that you're bought into the thing that you're doing, it's going to require you to do it. You can't, nobody can pretend to be you. You know, I have people who schedule posts and things like that, but I'm the one who goes in and comments and people feel the difference. I have worked with social sellers. I've worked with chatbots. All of them had a decline in revenue in my business. Again, because I was almost stepping on that point of differentiation, which was a connection to me. But it, again, we can talk time boundaries a different time. That I'm also a big believer in that, but you just have to create the space and then protect that space. Yeah. And I love that you're bringing this up because I just had a consulting meeting with somebody last week and they were coming to me about this like new membership community. They're kind of like getting going and wanted help with the community side. And the vision they were painting for me was a community in which they are not involved. And yet it was a very like mission driven thing. And I just looked at them and I said, we can't do this if that is what you want. Now, if you want to do that eventually, like if you want the 15 minutes a day down the line, great. But I need you all in now because you are the one who has to ignite this flame. You're the one that has to start this movement and stand on the hill and say, he, this is who we are and this is where we're going. And do you want to help me carry this torch? And then as you pass that torch on, you have this big burning flame of all of these people carrying it and your flame doesn't have to burn as bright, right? So you can start to step back, but I'm like, you, you got to be the one now. So if you can commit to being the one, then we can talk about this. Otherwise, this conversation is pretty much done. So I love that you're just really painting that picture of you can't hear all of these like millionaire people on these podcasts talking about live this life where you're like not really involved and be the CEO and you shouldn't be in the weeds and all like you should never touch your Facebook group and not recognize that they were in the weeds. They were the one hands in the community doing the work, which is what has led to this success, which is what has led to their ability to step out a little bit more and allow other people to really help facilitate that. I just think that is so wise and helpful of you to just come out and say that like, no, like this is like two to three hours a day and you got to want it. And people tell me all the time, they're like, Shannon, you're the community person. Like, why don't you have a free Facebook group? And I'm like, because I'm a mom of four and a grandma to one right now. And I literally do not have the capacity, like the energetic capacity to have a whole bunch of other people in my life that I'm nurturing. And I want to do it at the level I know it needs to be done to represent what I teach, you know, and I'm working with clients and supporting their community managers who are having to show up like that and supporting my clients and the business owners that have to show up like that. And so I, I just tell people all the time, like, this is just a boundary for me right now, maybe one day, but right now, like if I can't show up with that full energy, I don't even want to pretend to play the game, you know? I think that's super smart because a lot of people end up frustrated because they start a Facebook group. Maybe they're really excited for a week. They're pasting, posting stuff and then it's crickets. And then I see a lot of people pointing fingers at their audience, the people in the group. Why aren't they showing up? Why aren't they going? And I'm like, I are you ready for this conversation? <laughs> because it's, it, you know, and again, there are strategies there. And I'm sure you teach these things as well. There are tactics that we can implement and steps that we can take. And again, this part of the early framework of the Free Mama movement, I was very intentional. I had a couple of interns, women who couldn't afford my program, but really wanted access. And we did a trade. And I said, here's the deal. I'm going to give you access. And what I need in return is for you to go talk about genuinely, not just like, oh my gosh, Lauren's admit, but like, what are you learning? What are the, qu post your questions, post your wit. Like, I need you to be the model participant in the group. And what starts to happen is like you were talking about a flame. It kind of fans the flame, right? Other people go, oh, that person's being vulnerable and asking a question. Like, I feel safe asking a question. And there's this ripple effect. I couldn't have done it all by myself, you know, it was kind of my version of an ambassador program, right? It was like, here, I just need this handful of women. And then of course I was making sales and these were early days. The group was like 50 people. Now it's over 40,000, but 
it takes time. I would say for almost a year, six months to a year, I was probably in there about two to three hours a day before really, you know, think kind of once you get after that, somewhere between one and 5,000, you can really get that engagement. And because I had set the tone, because I had said, this is the expectation, we help each other. Posts don't go without responses. Like this is, we are here, we're in this together. Other people who had gone through my program, who had gotten some results, now they were qualified to answer questions. Now they could come in and help other people. And so it wasn't reliant on me having to be the person to do that. And then again, now you have team and things like that, and it just continues to grow. But those early months, they were the hardest and most time consuming. But without the effort that I put in at that point, there's no way I would have the community that I have today. And something to pull out from that, if you're listening to this and you're like, wait, that's the opposite of what I thought it would be. Because so often people come to me and they're afraid of scale. They're afraid of growth. And what you recognize and realize when you've been in it and you've seen it done is that it gets easier. It requires less time the more the group grows. If you have been intentional about setting the cause and culture early on and upholding those boundaries, because if you get a group of 40,000 people who are just running rampant and wild, they're not quite sure why they're there. There's no clear vision for the group and the culture. It's not a safe place. Then yeah, you're either going to have a dead group that people don't show up in because they don't have a reason to show up and it's not safe to show up, or you're going to have just like an absolutely wild group of crazy. So when you work really hard in those early days to really cultivate that core group of people and help multiply in them this cause that has been put on your heart, that mission that's in your heart, and then create and cultivate and uphold that culture, as you scale, it gets easier. It gets easier and it requires less time. So don't be afraid of scale. And I think Oftentimes I run into people that are like, gosh, like, oh, a group of 40,000 or a group of 60,000 like we had with Stu. Like, how do you manage that? I'm like, way easier than your group of 100 you're trying to drum up conversation in every day. It's a way different conversation. Okay, so let's talk about the free mom of movement. I love what you've done with the community, but I also really love, and I think this is a missed opportunity for a lot of people, how you weave that identity and that movement into the webinar, like whatever you're doing for your sales cycle, whatever you're doing to get conversions. And then even for those that don't buy, you bring them back into that. Like you said, like you're here to serve the non-buyers as well. And maybe one day they will become a buyer. And so they just continually are in this, this cycle of like, I get into the webinar, I understand and begin to buy into the identity. I either buy or I don't buy. And if I don't buy and put into this free Facebook group where I continually get exposed to the movement, to the identity, which I adopt more and build more belief in over time, which makes me more likely to be a buyer down the line. So can you talk a little bit about that? I know now for those of you that are like not into the technical side of marketing and all of this, I know I talk a lot about back end what happens after the sale, but we are going to talk right now about how a community can really support you on the marketing and sales side of the business. Yeah. Okay. Before I get into that side, the geeky funnel side, as I say, which I love, you mentioned the word identity several times though in your question. And I think those are actually two different things. There's lots of kind of, like you said, the in and out cross promotion happening, which is something I do often. And I'll talk about that in just a second. As far as the identity piece, going back to your very first question in this interview, I'm thinking like there are things that if you want a community, you have to assign the identity. Now, I happen to have a business name where it's just pretty obvious. My company is literally called The Free Mama. Started it in 2014. I did not start The Free Mama movement to 2017. So there was a little bit of premonition there, but I'm wearing my Free Mama shirt when my Students graduate from my course. They get a shirt that literally says, I am a free mama. I am two pretty powerful words. What comes after that? I'm a gamma phi beta. I'm a skimmer. I'm a funnel hacker. Like these are all communities where you get this identity and you feel part of something. So that kind of ties back into the identity is the thing that's bigger than themselves. And it is literally a human necessity. As humans, we all have this basic need. And when you can create a community that's safe, that has all of your four C's, that gives people all of those things, that is really special. And people will not leave easily. They might outgrow it or whatever over time, but people don't leave that community very quickly. 
So to flip over to kind of the business side, because if you're listening to this, yes, you might want a community, but you might also want to make sales at some point. And I do too. And like I said, I'm very passionate about my Facebook group being this space where even non-buyers have a seat at the table. But with that being said, something that I've also done very intentionally is make sure that people know that I am the leader of the Free Mama movement. How many Facebook groups have you been a part of where you don't even know who's in charge? Like you have no idea whose group it is. You don't know if anybody's selling anything or not. And not that every Facebook group has that intention, but I'm part of a lot of business and networking groups where I'm like, I I don't know. And I always look at that as what a missed opportunity for that person to really set themselves apart, regardless of their offers or their goals for themselves. I just view that as a really big missed opportunity. And so I was always very intentional of, I would start all my, my name is Lauren Golden. I'm the founder of the Free Mama and the Free Mama movement. I say that the way I answer questions, even in text, I think I position myself in a way where it's obvious that I'm, I'm the one in charge here. Just the way I communicate about our group or our resources, there's just this level of ownership and confidence in a really inviting way. So I'm big on re-enrollment because like you said, someone might find my Facebook group because they signed up for my webinar, right? So from the moment, let's say I'm running paid traffic or there's a reel or YouTube video, Free Mama TV is a huge organic source of leads for us. So I'm going to invite somebody. Ultimately, they're going to sign up for my webinar, right? So they're on a funnel. They're going to give me their email. Before they even watch the webinar, they will be invited to join my Facebook group. It will be either on a confirmation page. I will talk about it at the beginning of the video. It's going to go out in an email. I want them in my community. Why? Because before I even want to sell them something, I want to sell them on my mission. I want them to go, yes, that's me. I'm like her. I want to be a part of that. I want to be around people who also want this thing. Okay, so I'm very intentional and it's everywhere. So now they get access to the webinar. Like you said, maybe they buy. Great. Maybe they don't. Let's the buyers for a second before we talk about the non-buyers. Even the people who buy, again, this was very intentional. 2017 baby entrepreneur Lauren somehow was smart enough to do this. I integrated my free community, not even my coaching group, my free community into my course. In the workbook, it says, hey, like it has their thing, the lesson, whatever. And then at the bottom, it might say something like, what was your biggest aha from today? Make sure you head over to the Facebook group and share it with everybody. Or did you have a question? It you know, kind of varies throughout the book, but there's all of these calls to action for engagement, not even in the Facebook group. I'm sending them, from the buyers from where they are over to the community. It's social proof. It's a place where I can help them regardless of whether or not they're in coaching or someone else in the community can be there for them. But the biggest thing is, and it drums up engagement, right? So it's just, it's people going and making their own organic posts, but other people are seeing it and they're going, huh, they're in the program. Maybe I should be in the program. Or what is this program? I'll see that on other people's things of like, wait, how do I learn about this? Or things like that. So it gets people curious. So those are the buyers. The non-buyers, again, some people come, maybe it's a referral. Maybe they come straight from YouTube. Maybe they haven't watched the webinar yet, or maybe they came from the webinar and they didn't buy. Part of my daily 15 minutes is just all I'm doing is answering questions. And at this point, you probably know this. Five and a half years later, I'm like, I've said everything I want to say. It's all on YouTube. So like I'm driving people to videos. I'm doing all kinds of stuff. Sometimes I'll answer a quick question. But I'm just in there. I'm being seen. I'm letting them know that I actually care about them. But once a week, I go live. And I kind of call this my re-enrollment webinar. But it's really a Facebook Live. And I have this particular framework that I follow. It's called a EULA. I taught this at Funnel Hacking Live. Basically, EULA stands for Update, Lesson, and Announcement. So I'm there. Hi, I'm Lauren Golden. I'm in charge here, but I don't say it like that. But I want them to associate me as the leader of the group. I'll tell them what's new. Maybe we launched a new program recently. Maybe there's an event coming up. Maybe I just did a new video. Something that I think will help them. And I make it clear to them why I'm sharing it with them. Why is it important that they know this update? What's in it for them, basically? And then I do a lesson. So I'll do a little training. Sometimes it's mindset. Sometimes it's marketing. Sometimes it's sales. Whatever it is, I'll do a little training, something I'm thinking about or have been learning about, maybe 15 to 20 minutes. And then A is announcement. So this would be, hey, we have this cool thing coming. It might be like a hook to an open loop of like a save the date. It could be an actual pitch. And something else I'm always doing during these lives is I'm always talking, not pitching, talking about 
my offers. So I used to have a paid group coaching program that was called The Squad. We closed it last year. We've got new fun stuff we're creating. But I would just say, oh, yeah, last week in The Squad. And people who were newer might be like, what's The Squad in the chat? And then I could go back later and be like, oh, it's our group coaching program. It does this, this, and this. Let me know if you want more information. I never just drop links unless it's to like something free. I never drop links to my offers in my community. I always ask permission and it's my group. But I ask because it, again, I think it goes back to that safety. People feel like they're being invited to learn about something rather than feeling sold to. But by constantly talking about my offers, but doing it in this framework that's value first, Everybody in my community knows what we have. They know what's available to them, but they're not feeling like, oh, I'm attending this webinar once a week where someone's just trying to sell me something. It's very natural, but it's a way to bring people back in for when they are ready to become a buyer. So you're doing these lives inside of the community, which is awesome because it's value add. You're showing up, right? That keeps the group going. That continues to reiterate this, I'm in charge here, which I love. I always tell people, I'm like, every movement needs a leader or it's not a movement. So talk about the webinar itself. I like to, for those that are new to this world of being a community creator, get really basic with it. So you have the free group. They sign up maybe through an ad for a webinar, which is not the Facebook Live. This is something happen, happening elsewhere that's really about sales for your program. But when they register for that, they get invited into the free group right away through any number of things. Could be the thank you page, the email, the thank you video on the thank you page could be a bonjour if you want to do that, like a video message. There's a thousand ways you can do that invite. But you get them in there because like you said, which I love, you want them to buy into the mission first, which is awesome. So you're getting them in there. If they buy they are still involved in that free community. It's not like you're like, okay, now you graduated from this community. Now you're in this paid community. They're still involved in the free community, which makes them the best advocates for what's happening inside of the paid community and keeps that conversation going. So that is awesome. But even the non-buyers are still getting nurtured through these weekly Facebook Lives. So talk to me a little bit about the webinar itself. Do you talk a lot about the free mama movement and what it means to be a free mama on the webinar? I do. And I give lots of examples of free mamas. So again, this is going to be your social proof, but it's not just look at this person who had this win. It's a lot of the transformation. Look at this mom who was staying home, maybe had lost part of herself after having kids, had quit her job, but realized she missed working, you know, that story. And then she became a free mama. And then look at her revenue and blah, 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 right? Which no mistake there in that language, y'all. Hold on. I'm pausing you. Then she became a free mama. Like just reiterating that identity. It's not like, and then she made $100,000 and quit her job. Yes, sure. Whatever. But like, then she became a free mama. So it's future pacing, adopting that identity. Okay, keep going. Well, I was just going to say we have several examples. We're intentional about relating to different types of women who are coming into our world. When I first started, I really was talking to the former version of myself, which I think a lot of business owners do that and have that story. And I was the working mom. I was overwhelmed. I was stressed out. Now we know there's a whole lot of moms who are attracted to what we do. And we even have some dads who are comfortable with their masculinity. And we have non-mothers as well. We have grandparents and fur baby moms and all the things. So we're very inclusive. Of course, the company is still called The Free Mama, but we show these examples and we show this transformation of kind of before when they were out on their own. And then, like you said, when they became a free mama, but then of course, our logical brain still wants to justify it with the financial results. How long did it take to get a client? How long did it take to get started? How long did it take to quit their job? Those types of things. So I think it's subtle. I don't know if I'd have, that's a really great question. I have not watched my webinar in a hot second. I don't know that there's a specific invite so much as I do a lot of references. We also do this on Free Mama TV, which is my YouTube channel. I always reference my Facebook group on every episode. I'll either, I'll work it in differently. So it's not go join the Facebook group. It might be, if you have follow-up questions, the best place to connect with me is over on our Facebook group. And the good news is you can connect with thousands of other people just like you, which is really cool. It's free to join. I'm really active, blah, blah, blah. So I'm always seeding 
the Facebook group. And this is actually the advice that I give, ironically, being on this interview with you. This is the advice I give my students who are growing and they're to a place in their business where maybe they're getting invited to speak or do podcasts or whatever. They always come to me. They're like, what do I need to know? How do I need to be prepared? So I kind of walk them through it. And I was like, more than anything, because, you know, be yourself and you can't get it wrong as long as you're speaking to your experiences and your knowledge. It's when we try to posture and then that's when an interview can go south. But I said, the number one thing you really need to know is what do you want the people to leave with in terms of how to connect with you? Yes, there's your message and all of that, but some people are better at guiding interviews than others and that's out of your control. But I don't know that I've ever been on a podcast interview where someone hasn't asked me at the end, What's the best way for our listeners to connect with you? And there has not been one interview in six years that I have ever done where the answer has not been, join the Free Mama Movement Facebook group. I don't care what I'm selling, what I'm promoting. It does not matter because if I can get you in the community, if I can get you to see how epic it is, if I can get you, well, first of all, then I'll get your email list, which that also or get you on my email list, which also goes back to technology. So if you're not doing that with your Facebook group, you can create a whole indoctrination sequence via email just from someone joining your group and answering their email in the questions. So if I can get you to my community, I can get you everything else once you actually know, like, and trust me. And I've done something for you first. So that's always a big piece of advice. So I really do try to incorporate it into everything I do because, again, it's a space where even non-buyers have a place. I love that. And it goes back to what you were saying about the hub. Like all roads lead to that Facebook group, which is so important because energetically it allows you to know where your focus should be. I do want to kind of get in the weeds just a little bit because this strategy piece has been so good. And I can imagine, I'm like, everybody who's listening to this right now is like, pulling over their card to take massive notes because this is so good. But I, there's a couple of things I want to touch on because you said you were just talking about getting leads. And so for those that aren't familiar, you can really leverage those questions, those entrance questions for a group to get leads. So talk a little bit about that. I would love to. In fact, if you can be patient with me for two seconds, I'm even going to bring up my account so I can be we change the questions every now and again, but I would love to tell you what we're currently doing. Not only is this a place for you to get leads, of course, I would have to know where to go <laughs> to find the question. Not only is this a place for you to get leads because you can use those questions um, and you, I think our very first one is, this is required. You can always opt out later, but you are not getting in the group and we say it nicer than that, but you're not getting in the group if you don't answer this question and it's for their email. But here's the kicker. When we're starting or we're newer to business or we don't have the revenue we want yet, we can be desperate. I'm just going to say it because I've been there. I've been very desperate where we say something and then we're like, I want more people in my group. No, we are very strict. We have very strict boundaries with who we let in our group. I don't need another thousand people in my group, whether I have 1,000 or 50,000. I don't need that. I need the right people in my group. And so we really use the questions as pre-qualification. I think right now, I don't want to try to find it, but uh, I think our questions, number one is email and you can go hack me. Go, go, you're, this is, yeah, go opt in. Yeah, I was going to say, this is like, this is the call to action to go to the free mama group and walk through this. And you'll see if you get in or not, because I have, I'll have people message me. Hey, I, you know, I tried to get into your Facebook group and I'll go look them up and they didn't answer the questions. And I'm like, you're in purgatory. I don't know what to tell you. Like, because for me, part of the identity, and I talk about this, of being a free mama is being an action taker. So if you don't follow instructions or you're not willing to participate or you are too lazy to click a checkbox that says that you agree to our rules, you're probably not ever going to buy from me. You're probably not going to be very engaged or participate in the group. If you do, it's probably not going to be the right energy. And I am very comfortable not letting those people inside of the group. This may sound exclusive, but to me, it's actually very protective. It's kind of like your audition. It's like we have a lot of free value in this group, a lot, not a little bit, a lot of free value inside of this group. Three questions is all I need from you. And it's like a, a test of, are you going to do it? And so I think it's, I think it's the email. How did you hear about us? Which we do 
sort of eyeball scan that. It does get captured through our third-party app, so we can go back and review. But we can eyeball pretty easily that the vast majority of our organic traffic into the group is coming from our YouTube videos, which I've had that channel for years. It performs well, so that's not surprising. And again, I'm always very casually inviting people to come connect with us, so it makes sense. But we can see after a podcast, typically we'll get an influx of, I heard about you because I was just on Community Creators, all those things. So the third question I think has to do with the rules of, did you read the rules? Do you agree to them? We do not let people in who do not say yes. We really don't. So I could probably have a group with 100,000 people in it by now. But that would probably require a full-time community manager, and it might keep me up at night. So yeah, it's a really great place for you to pre-qualify the type of people that you want in your group. And for those that have been kind of in this world for a little bit, there's been a lot of debate about using the third-party apps to collect those leads. And so do you have one that you use that you love? Like, Group leads is one. I think that's exactly what we're on is I was going to look it up, but I think group leads is what we use. We're very, I don't know what the dialogue is about it. We're very explicit about that they're opting in. We don't try to like pull it out. There's no surprise. There's absolutely a disclaimer of like, in order to join the group, this is required. You will be added to our email list. You can unsubscribe at any time. And I think it says we send them a free gift because we do. We have that. I think there's like a three to five email indoctrination sequence gets kicked off right away because the app sets up an integration. So all of this is happening in the background, which is beautiful. And I would have to check my rates. I haven't looked in a minute, but to see what the opt out is. But we do. We have a lot of value in that initial email sequence because you think about it when someone joins your Facebook group, that's your opportunity to make a first impression. And so a lot of the disengagement that's probably happening in a lot of groups, whether they're new or not, is if you don't capture them right away. Now, again, I'm big on boundaries and I'm a minimalist. So I'm actually not in a ton of Facebook groups and I have most notifications turned off because my priority is running my own communities. So that those are the notifications I want to see. But a lot of people who are consumers, they're consuming your information or mine or whatever, they're probably in 500 groups. If you don't get them roped in and participating, like right away, they're gone. They're going to, unless they're buying something from you already, like, or they're, they've been following you on Instagram for years or whatever. It's, it is difficult. I don't want to sugarcoat it. It is difficult, but it's your responsibility as the leader to give them a reason to show up, to engage early on, to put themselves out there. Yeah. Okay. I love this. One last thing before we, we kind of wrap up, like I would love for you to just share Two things. One, talking to the person who's like, gosh, I have a mission in my heart that I feel called to, but I don't know where to start. Like, I don't know how to start becoming the leader or feel capable even of being the leader of this kind of movement. Because I talk to these people behind the scenes all the time, right? They're in my ear and they're like, oh my gosh, I really love that you do this. And I just, I really have this vision for whatever it is. Like, I don't know, saving the baby whales. I have no idea. But where do I start and what do I do and how do I develop this confidence to be the leader of this kind of movement? What would you say to that person? I wanted to start a community. Like I said, I wanted I wanted the community I never had. I started freelancing as a full time working mom with a newborn and a two year old, a husband who was never home because he is also an entrepreneur and we had brick and mortar businesses at the time. I was incredibly isolated. I had no one to ask questions to. I failed forward fast, which was good because I learned quickly. Um, But after two years of doing that and having quite a bit of success for myself, that is really where like the calling was placed on my heart of like, you are like, you're supposed to go teach other people how to do this. The way that my business evolved looked very different from that early calling because I wanted to do it. I won't say quietly, but I wanted to do it comfortably is probably the right word. A Facebook group for me actually felt kind of safe because I'm like, well, no one will know what like my friends and family won't see me. But I had never done a Facebook Live before. I actually had a business coach who was like, you're going to start doing this. And I'm like, no, I'm not. She's like, yes, you are. It gets easier. So in terms of if you don't feel ready or you don't feel good enough or you don't feel 
capable, but you have a calling, you have an obligation to feed and nurture that calling, and you will become qualified through tiny steps of action. I wanted to die the first time I did a Facebook Live. I think it was maybe three minutes, but it felt like three days. Don't think anyone watched live. If they did, it was like the eyeball for a second and then they were gone. And I was mortified. I go live every week now. I don't even think about it. I love it. So you, here's my tactical advice now. So what I want to say is you're not alone. It is scary. Taking a risk feels scary. But I also know that those callings, those desires, those missions, they don't go away. They get louder. And for me, when I finally launched the Free Mama Movement, it was because the fear of never trying, the fear of regret, the fear of not going after something that so felt like a sense of purpose to me was way scarier than the fear of what other people were going to think about me or the fear of it not working. It was like, does that make sense? Like the fear of regret got really loud. Your first step might not be to start a Facebook group if you're at ground zero and that's okay. Because like we talked about today, it's going to require you to be all in. It's going to require that commitment. So I would say your tactical first step, your baby step, your mini win is going to be just talking about it. When you start talking about it, you will start to see who's interested. You will find your voice. You will clarify how you want to talk about the thing or what it's going to ultimately look like. You know, what's really interesting is I had sent you some slides from my Funnel Hacking Line presentation. And in them, I have this screenshot. The Fremont Movement was not my first Facebook group. Now, it was my first Facebook group where I actually had something to offer in a business, but I had another Facebook group. It was called Working Moms Village, and it was literally my attempt in that season. I was freelancing. Everybody who lived near me was a stay-at-home mom. I didn't know anybody who worked. None of my immediate friends had kids yet. I was the only one like me, and I was craving connection. I think this group got to maybe 50 people ever. But it was such good practice. It was in that group. Like that group was a stepping stone to the Free Mama movement. I learned in there. I figured out my voice. I figured out what I wanted to do. I figured out what I was really passionate about. Like I developed my sense of mission and cause, like you say, in there. And from an integrity standpoint, I opened a new group because my intentionality had changed. So just take that first step. That's my suggestion. You don't need to have your eye on the 40,000 person group with a million dollars. Like, just start talking about it. It's like a seed that you have to just water because your clarity and your confidence are both going to be a byproduct of you taking action. That's so good. I just, when you talked about that original group, I was like, oh man, I still have a list of Facebook groups that I had started over the years, blogs, like all of the different things. Then I look back and when I'm not in my right headspace, I go, oh, that was such a waste of time. Like, why did I ever derail? And then I go, no, no, that was the very thing that built the confidence. That was the very thing that gave me the clarity of what I wanted or I didn't want that led to this. So good. Don't be a quitter, right? I've got a book shout out really quickly. I haven't even finished it, but it's exactly what you just said. It's called Start More Than You Can Finish. Because we always talk about like, don't start something unless you can finish. But the point of the book, the point of the book is it's actually so good for us to start even when we don't finish because of what we just talked about. Like I started that. I didn't finish it. Like how many projects or ideas have I started? It's not a waste. It is a cultivation process. It is weeding. It is information. It is growth. Like it is all of the things. So anyway, shout out to that. I'm listening to the audiobook. I haven't even finished it, but it's right what we're talking about. So don't be afraid to start because it might not be what you end up doing or it might not be right or perfect the first time. Not starting, not taking action is guaranteed to not take you anywhere. So yes, we're a big fan in the free mama. Many, many wins, as we like to say, many, many wins. Yeah. And in your journey, your desire may not be to achieve what Lauren has achieved with this, you know, seven figure business and best selling author. And now like, you know, a desired speaker and a coach and all of this. Your desire may be just to be able to be home with your kids when they get off the bus. And I think what I love about what you create and what a lot of us in this space, moms in this space are talking about more is you don't have to have the same dreams and goals as everybody else. 
we just want to help you get a little bit closer to that life that you want that has that kind of balance that allows you to show up fully for your family, for yourself, and still fulfill whatever that calling is that has been placed inside you. This is so good. I feel like we could talk for another hour and we probably will at some point, but I do want people to know, just like you said, the classic, where can people connect with you? I mean, I know we really want people to join the Free Mama group so that they can, like you said, just kind of hack, like get in there, see the experience, see how Lauren shows up. But is there any other way that you would want people to connect with you? That feels hard to answer now that I've already like told you my end game. You know, if you are looking to start, grow, or scale a virtual business, Free Mama TV is one of our best resources. It's free. There's nearly 200 episodes in there. It's something we're really proud of. I don't believe in the like, what information do I share or not share? I'm an open book. You can ask me anything. I teach everything. And then we actually just launched a new community, believe it or not. So we just launched our Free Mama membership, which gets you access to all of our paid resources now in a monthly uh program. So I'm really excited to take this idea of community, bring it into this idea of membership and be able to help people on a totally different level. Yeah. And anybody listening to that, to this is very familiar with that world because that's what we talk about all the time. It's like this merger of membership and community. I'm super excited and I'm really excited to watch this journey as you do kind of take everything that you've done and you've had bits and pieces and lots of success and all of that. And you gave yourself permission to say that was then and I'm being called to something different and new and to serve in a new way. And so, again, a whole nother podcast episode for the future. But there's a lesson in that as well in this is my business and I'm being called to run this differently and I want to show up in a different way. And so I can close this thing and shut it down, which you did. And I can invite people into something new, even if that means I'm getting rid of revenue and all of these sorts of things. It's like this little reset to set the stage for something new and bigger and greater. And so I'm really excited just as a friend to follow that journey with you. So thank you all so much for listening. Make sure to connect with Lauren if you haven't already. Thank you.